Good morning. Welcome to March 30th's devotion, taken from Philippians 4, reading verses 4 through 7. Begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7, reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Rejoice. Rejoice, God says through the Apostle Paul. Rejoice. Doesn't necessarily feel like a time to rejoice, right? Instead, feels like more like a time to worry, to be afraid, to question, to doubt. All of these things are easier to do right now than actually to rejoice. So how can a Christian who perhaps knows someone that's going through the effects of COVID-19 as far as the virus and its effects or is just feeling the effects of the isolation that is taking place or the effects on the economy that the isolation is having? How can a Christian rejoice? How can a Christian rejoice when there's so much going on in the world? You turn on the news and it's more bad news, more death, more death, uh, uh, higher numbers, and so on. And it seems like that curve is never, ever going to flatten. Seems like the last two weeks have been about two or three months. So how can we rejoice? How can you, how can I, how can a Christian rejoice even in the times in life where it would seem almost impossible to rejoice? God gives us the answer through the Apostle Paul. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You don't know what's going on or how this is all going to turn out. I don't know how this is all going to turn out. I don't have those answers. God is in control. He knows those answers. And what does he ask you and me to do? He says, do not worry about anything, but in everything, pray. Go to God. Go to God with your doubts, your fears, and your worries. Take it to him and let him give you the hope and the joy of what is to come. Paul further explains that it's the peace of God, which surpasses all understandings, that will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. What is that peace? The peace of God is found in Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of God is found at the cross of Jesus, where he goes and he takes that doubt and that worry and that fear 
away. He takes away our punishment. He takes away eternal death. And he gives us the confident hope of life everlasting with him in heaven. What a joy it is that even in these chaotic times, whether we're being affected by the virus personally and its effects on our body, or whether we're being affected by the isolation or the downturn in the economy or anything else, what a confidence it is to know that we have peace and we have victory in Jesus. Take a moment today to sing hymn number 108, Jesus, Refuge of the Weary. There'll be a few short uh, or a verse of introduction, and then we'll join in the song. Join me in singing if you are comfortable, or ponder on the words. Jesus, refuge of the weary, last Redeemer whom we love. Fountain in life's desert dreary, Savior from the world above. Oh, how oft our eyes offended, Gaze upon us, sinners fall, yet upon the cross extended, you endure the pain of all. Dare we pass that cross unheeding, breathing no repentant vow? As we see you wounded, bleeding, see your thorn-encircled brow. Since your sinless death has brought us life, eternal peace and rest. Only what your grace has taught us calms the sinner's deep distress. Jesus, may our hearts be burning with more fervent love for you. May our eyes be ever turning to behold your cross anew. Till in glory parted never from the blessed Savior's sight. Graven in our hearts forever, dwell the cross, the crucified. Why don't we join our God in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we pray to you on behalf of all who are worried, all who are fearful, all who are doubting, on behalf of all of us, as we struggle with this new reality, we ask that you keep this re new reality temporary. We ask that you spread the slow of the virus. We ask that you heal those who are ill, including some of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We ask that you be with all that are struggling from the effects of this virus, whether it's from body and ailments, or whether it's from isolation and worry and depression, or whether it's from 
what is just happening out in the world. We ask that you comfort us and guide us in your word and remind us that we have true reason to rejoice. We have true reason to rejoice because you have won the victory for us and heaven is ours because of what your son has done. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Certainly wish you God's blessings today. I uh, pray that you're doing well and staying healthy, and we'll see you again tomorrow. God's blessings. Bye-bye.